Hey folks, how's it going? Today going to be doing more ranges stuff, uh, going to do group by, and we'll see how we go. We might do some more, but so far every time I've said that we've only got one done because things have gone wrong, so <laughs> we'll see. Alright, so group by, uh, we'll make some tests. Group by is another view, and the basic idea is it allows you to take some range and it's going to group, take a binary predicate and it's going to group the um, consecutive uh, members of that range which satisfy, satisfy that predicate into a sub-range. Uh, so I'll show you what it looks like. Hey Orphus Flow, how's it going? Uh, we use catch2 as usual and have test case, just call it group by for now. So say we've got like, uh, what could we group? Dogs. Dogs have names and dogs have an age. Include string. And then we might say have a std vector of dogs. Um, called dogs, and the name, say we'll call one Fido, and Fido is 12, and then we've got, uh, what other good names for dogs? Bob the dog, Bob the dog is also 12. Catherine the dog is not 12, Catherine is 9. Max. Max the dog. How old is Max? Max can be can be 12 again, and then we'll have another 12 year old called Psy. The dog will be called Psy. So the idea behind group by, uh, hey George, is if I were to um, if I were to iterate over um, TL group by, um, so we'll give it our dogs and we'll group by age. Um, so we'll take two dogs, um, left and auto right, and we'll be returning if, uh, left dot age equals right dot age. Okay, I think this is correct. So what this will do is this will group the dogs by age, but only the consecutive ones. So we will end up with three groups in this example. Uh, and then we can loop over the groups for dog in group, then we can say, let's print out group start, and then print out the name of the dog, uh, d dot name. Okay, so what we're, we would hope to get from this is um, the We'd get a group start and then we'd get Fido and Bob. Then we'd get a new group starting because the age is different and we'd get Catherine. And then we'd get one more group containing Max and Sai. So that is what group by does. Um, so now we, we could call it group by. There's there's a few like um, alg ranges kind of in this family. You know, we, we have this thing which takes a binary predicate and groups things um, by that predicate, there could also be the, the potential for um, taking a unary predicate or, a, or rather some projection, um, which could look like instead of taking left and right and comparing equal, we would just take some dog and return dog dot age. 
And this would give us the same thing, just expressed in a slightly different manner. You know, there's sometimes when your binary predicate might not be equality, it might be something completely different. So these are both useful. Um, and then there's also chunk, which is, again, similar, but not based on predicates, based on, you know, I want to chunk this into groups of two or three. So what I am thinking is that this thing here, the one which takes a unary predicate, is called chunk by key. Okay, because we're we're taking like a a unary projection which is is giving you a key. The original thing that we had, ranges B3 calls it group by, I'm gonna call this chunk by. And then the thing which chunks by an integer size, that's just going to be called chunk. I think that that's what makes most sense to me um, for consistency in the naming, chunk by, yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go for. Um, so this is our use right now. And we're going to have a header called um, oops, uh, tl chunk by hpp okay so let's get started now there's another design decision we need to make here um when we're writing ranges we're always thinking about when can this be random access when can this be bi-directional or forward or or input now chunk by I haven't tried implementing it before, this is my first time, but my intuition is that implementing it for forward ranges is really easy, or like relatively easy. Implementing for input ranges is much harder because you know for, for forward ranges we can essentially just pre-compute um, a single group at a time because we can just go forward until the predicate fails uh, and then return a sub-range. But you can't do that for an input range because you, you'd have to consume everything one at a time. So you're going to have like nested iterators, which are all pointing back into our view and keeping state. Uh, it's going to be a nightmare. So um, I'm not sure what to do there. I, th I think I'll, I'll leave it up to you folks. Um, if you would, I'm going to implement forward range support first because I th think doing forward range support and input range support are essentially going to be completely different types um, because of how different they are. So I'm going to do forward range support first and then you can all decide if you want me to do input range support or just move on to a different um, algorithm. Yeah, exercise to reader. If and uh, make some header guards, chunk by. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, okay. As always, we're going to be in our TL namespace. TL. And our type is going to be called uh, chunk by view. And it's going to be templated on some kind of range, which for now I'm going to say is a forward range. We need ranges. Okay. So for now I'm going to require forward ranges. We can maybe do something different later. Um, now is the time where I have to decide do I just want to copy paste a bunch of boilerplate? Or do I want to write myself? I think this one's different enough from the other ones we've implemented that we should probably just do everything um, from the start. Okay, so we need default constructor. Um, we're going to need begin function. We're going to need an end function. Uh, we're going to need a constructor which takes um, rv which we'll call base, make it private. Oops, public. So we need a chunk by view, 
which takes a v and um, forwards it into actually we just take a, a v and move it into base whoops just didn't move v okay so our begin and our end we're gonna have some private iterator type which I'll just make a struct. And now, do we need begin and end to be the same thing? I think for we're, we're going to have a bunch of state in our iterator, so it probably just makes sense to return a default sentinel here. Uh, we could think about trying to make this a common type later, but for now, I think this is reasonable. Okay, and begin is going to take, um, it's going to return our iterator. Now, in addition to our um, base, we are also going to require some function. Hey, Krobazor, thanks for the follow. Which I'll call func. So we're going to be templated on some forward range and some um, binary predicate. Thanks for the follow upside down. Now, what is the are the arguments for binary predicate? They just have the two types. Which wait, is binary predicate even a thing, or is it just a predicate? Well. Trying to remember what the kind of std predicate is a thing. Std predicate. Okay, maybe we'll just have take a std predicate, which takes two um, references to whatever the the range gives. So that will be std ranges uh, range reference t for v and just two of these. And that will be the type of f. So f is something which requires um, to be callable with two um, references that you get by dereferencing iterators into this range. A to say poll. Uh, okay. So now we've got our func, we've got our base. Now our iterators. So our iterators, what kind of iterators are we going to support? Now, oops. I'm going to rename this chunk by as well. So now I think that we can't support um, random access iterators. Doesn't make sense because you need to walk over every single element in order to create the group. Um, could maybe support bidirectional iterators? But you would need to keep a bunch of state, so it's maybe not worth it. Um, I think that the the iterators for chunk by are gonna have to be forward iterators. Uh, if you disagree, please let me know. But that's what I'll be starting under the assumption of. So our iterators are going to take. Um, where we're starting at. So um, the iterator t for v, which we'll call current. And we need this function. We'll probably need other things. So we'll just take a, a pointer to chunk by view. There you go. 
um, yep, take a point to chunk by view and call that parent. So when you construct an iterator, you're going to pass in, whoops, std iterator t v and chunk by view star parent. And then we're just going to initialize those. Current underscore is move all of current and parent underscore is just parent. Don't need to move there because it's just a pointer. It's going to be exactly the same. Nice. OK. So in order for this to be a forward iterator, then we're going to need to support a few things. We need um, operator star for reading. We need um, iterator ref operator plus plus and we need iterator operator plus plus int which is postfix uh, we do not need minus minus because we're not going to support um, bidirectional iterators so that should do um, of course we also need a bunch of um, types here Okay, so our value type, what's our value type going to be? When we dereference this, our value type is going to be a subrange, I guess. You know, I'll leave these until we've worked out, until we've done a bit more coding and worked out how this is going to function. So when you do an operator star, this is going to return a subrange from the current position up until the end of the current group, which means we probably need to pre-compute that. Um, likely when we, when we construct this thing, we'll need to compute the end of the current range. And when we increment it, we'll need to calculate the um, the end of the current range, which we can do because we're requiring forward ranges. Um, so as well as current, let's say we'll take a iterator T of V for um, end of current range. Call it that for now. I like I like long names like this. It makes sense. I can type. Typing's typing's fine. Um, okay, so when we construct this, right? Let me. Clang format doesn't like ranges code very much, so it does not tend to to give me good formatting. So when I construct this, um, I'm gonna construct current and then I'm also going to work out where the end of the current range is. So the end of the current range is um, going to be the position at which calling this binary predicate on the adjacent members returns false. So I could probably use std adjacent is that an algorithm? std adjacent find It is. So I can give it my current iterator and I guess just end the end of the range and my binary predicate and that will give me back the end of the range. Um, which does mean that I need to call std end uh, std ranges end on my on my base. Is that going to be fine for a forward range? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so end of current range is going to be std adjacent find from current 
until std. I guess I just want you std end here because we're using algorithms. std end of parent underscore base. So from our current position, which is going to be the the beginning of our range until the end work out when func fails and so adjacent find is going to return me a forward iterator that's all good um i think that's correct right um when we construct this iterator we're going to pass in um std ranges begin of base and we're going to pass a pointer to ourselves hey Han hanulak okay hey Ainem. and then we want to do something very similar when we increment right we want to set the end of the current range We have to do a little bit more work. There. But anyway, when we so when we dereference, we've got current, we've got end of current range. Um, so I feel like can we straight up return a did sub range? Let's see what did ranges sub range says. Thanks to the follow drawn down. Okay, so sub range requires, uh, oh, does not have the constructor in there. But I'm guessing that we give it the begin iterator and the end iterator for our subrange, and then it gives us back a subrange. That's how I would implement subrange, so <laughs> that's how I, I assume that they have done it. Uh, I don't think I've used, yeah, here we go, first to last. So is that... Is that actually the the one past the end iterator? Is that the um, the actual last element? Because that's going to be different, right? Let me look at the standard. Uh, il dot is slash C++ draft. I don't like looking at the standard when I can look at C++ reference for usage stuff like this, but I guess sometimes we've got to. All right, where's subrange? Range subrange. If you've never been on here before, this is essentially just a um, a link to the um, the current draft of the C++ standard. All right, range constructor. Okay, so this is a a half closed range. So yeah, this is what I I hoped. It's the current the the begin and the one past the end iterator you passed it. Good, good, good. Okay. So when we dereference, then we're gonna return std ranges subrange of current and end of current range. Um it's one past the end, yep. Yeah. So the difference between a range and a subrange. Um so subrange is like if you look at what we have in the ranges library, right? Uh, so range is not a type. Range is a, a concept which says that you're something which you which is a uh, a type which you can call begin and end on, and begin and end have some other constraints associated with them. So subrange constructs a range from um, some begin and end iterators. It's basically what it does. Combines an iterator and a sentinel into a single view. Which I think web development is much easier to learn than C or C++ and it's easier to become a specialist in the first. Um, I, C++ is a tough first language, I think. Um, 
but there is you know there's difficulties in web development as as well uh i think it's pick what you're interested in and what you think you would um, be motivated by learning right like if you're interested in um in low-level programming and interesting like type-based stuff like this then c++ is great if you interested in web development and like design and um and building like scalable systems for for web applications then do that uh i think is my answer um okay yeah exactly sub range is basically a way of saying i want a generic range from yeah a pair of iterators or an iterator in a sentinel because um the the big and end can be different types in ranges Okay, so I think that works, which means that we can say our um, our value type is um, std ranges sub range, and what are our types? Uh, we can just say it's a sub range of std iterator t from v. Okay, I think that's correct. Um, right, so now when we increment this thing, that means we need to set current to end of current range, because this is us essentially skipping forward, and then we want to recompute the, um, the new end of the range. And then we need to return indirection through this. Um, operator plus plus is going to be exactly the same. Um, we're just going to create a copy of ourselves first. And then, um, oops, plus plus this. And then return temp operator. Can operator plus plus be implemented in terms of std exchange? Um, maybe. Not seeing I would do it for this immediately off the top of my head, but maybe I can. Um, okay, so we've got operator star, we've got operator plus plus, we got plus plus. Um, we got our value type, what are the other things that we need for our iterator? Our iterator needs, oh, we need equality. So friend bool, const expert bool, should make all of these const expert. Basically, there's no reason not, not to make things const expert in a lot of cases now. Um, it's another case where we kind of got the the defaults wrong. Um, this also needs to be default constructible. All right. So we need an operator equals equals where we take um, iterator constref LHS and iterator constref RHS comparing to iterators which are going to be the same if current is the same. Um, LHS current equals RHS current. And then we also need to be able to compare against um, the default sentinel, Uh, which is the default sentinel. This default sentinel is basically a type which doesn't store anything. It only exists to say, hey, have you have you completed? And we will have completed if... Um, all right, let's think about this. So when we plus plus, we set current to the end of current range. We then do adjacent find. Um, so when we plus plus past the end of this, i.e. current will be set to 
stood end of parent base, then this adjacent find won't do anything, which is fine. So we just want to check if current is end. Uh, parent underscore base. All right. I think that's good. Okay, so now we need a few more types specified here. Um, we need, was it value type? And we need, um, oh, our iterator tag using iterator category equals std iterate forward iterator tag. We're always going to be a forward iterator. Is that equivalent to checking if it's equal to end of current range? No, because the um, end of current range will be std end the iteration before the final one, right? Like when we when we get to um, like on our first iteration, we will initialize current to here essentially and end to here. Um, oh yeah, it's equivalent to checking if current is the same as end of current range. That would be the same thing, yeah. Um, okay, where were we? Um, iterate category. What are the other things we need? Um, iterator traits. Pointer. Pointer type. I'm just going to make that value type star. Um, a lot of these we don't need to write anymore, right? Like some of these are worked out by default. Um, we can try and compile it anyway and see what happens. Anyway, what else are we missing? We've got begin. Uh, this can be const. I guess this can be const. Uh, or can it be? Do we need different iterators for const and non-const? We're going to be able to mutate through this thing. Mm. Maybe I'm going to make going to make this const for now. Okay. Anything else? I guess we can constrain our um, oh no we need to to take our f here as well do we call this funk cool let's give this a shot Shall we? Chunk by. We include chunk by. Let's build see where our errors are. Probably do the same thing of switching to GCC if we get compiler errors to, to see what we've done wrong. Trying to remember what, which of these are, um, are given to you automatically. Anyway, here we go. That's ranges forward range. Uh, 
Oh, we also need our um, what's it called? This thing. Our constructor template deduction guide. Which will look like chunk by view and will be essentially the same. It's going to be some class R and some class F. And it's going to deduce like that. Std iterator t is not ranges iterator t. And here. Try again. Std default sentinel, std default sentinel t. Default sentinel is the tag you return. Like that. References must be initialized. Must they? Uh, mm, am I missing a? Yes. Chunk by is not a member of TL. chunk by view because I haven't implemented the I haven't implemented the piping yet so let's oops let's just do it like this for now and then we can we can implement the piping version when we get this working cannot deduce template arguments for chunk by view Okay, failed to specialize. Okay, so now we're getting a uh, um, mismatch in our constraints, I guess. Can't deduce template arguments, failed to specialize chunk view with VF with std vector and a lambda. <laughs> what are we missing here? I'm going to switch to GCC. See how that goes. See if that gives us a better error message. Yeah, not sure what I missed there. Okay, here we go. Invalid use a non-static data member. Okay, that has to be lhs.current. All right, constraint failure. This is what I'm looking for. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I'm icing GCC as well, but that's for a different, that's for TL2. I don't care about that for now. Can fix that later. Uh, Forty six ranges end. Need another LHS here. And no return statement. Return. Mm -mm. Done something wrong with my test as well. Oh, it's because I switched this around. Let's try now. Okay. Mm. All 
right, invalid conversion from const tail chunk view star to. Okay, this is because I need this to be const. Or maybe like, I'm not going to be modifying base, am I? What do you say now? Okay, yeah, I need to include IO stream. And I've got a bunch of const errors. I need to think more about the const correctness of this uh, for now. <laughs> I can do that. Again, we're on stream, we can fix these things later. Hey, thanks for the follow X cry. Okay. Um Something declared private. Oh, we need to make our iterator a friend. Because we declared base private and then we're trying to use it uh, here. Hopefully getting there. What's going on now? Declare private. Oh, right, that's because we're in a. You know what? I'm gonna make a public base function in here because that's the thing that ranges actually do and is semi reasonable. The reason that failed is because this is a friend. Uh, sorry, this one is a friend function of iterator, which does not transitively make chunk by view uh, a friend. So we need to do more work to get that working. And it's better to just do it like this. Uh, auto ref and auto const ref. Thanks for the follow, Bratan. Okay, and then in this function, instead of getting base like that, we just call the base function. And then we need to do that here as well. More invalid use of non-static data member. Where is this coming from? 46. Let's fix that. Maybe I didn't save in time. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I have three cats. They're all very cute. What's going on now? This is from something completely different. Here we go. Okay, this is a different error. <laughs> We're initializing discarding qualifiers from std range's end. Um, because this is const and this is not. Yeah, I really need to fix these these const issues. Because if this is a const iterator, then that means that the this pointer will be to base. Where's the binary when using WSL? When using WSL, the binary is stored inside your. Um, oh, sorry. So, um, oh, this isn't going to show me. So basically when I build, then I'm going to have a few, um, 
You know what? I can show you. Um, Come PowerShell. Um, wait, this is in. So in out, oops, and build. Then I get a few different folders. I get my native ones, and then I also get my GCC. So in here, then um, all of this is the the build binaries and stuff for my for WSL. You could configure it such that they went inside your WSL instance, so that if you're like using WSL two or something, and the file system performance is way better inside the um, the Linux file system, you could you can configure it like that. Uh, okay, let's rebuild. Oh, hey, thanks for the raid, Kazan. Okay, uh, what's going on here? Inconsistent begin and end types. Mm -mm -mm. That shouldn't be a problem though. Cannot convert to bool 46. Oh, whoops. Needs to be equals equals. Invalid use of func. This needs to be parent func. Don't really want to expose that to the world, so I'll iterator. I'll make iterator friend again. Yeah, good luck with PHP and Python and Ruby. It's uh, a good selection of things. Um, where was I? Trunk by. I need to include IO streams. And other than that, we're starting to get rid of most of our errors. Um, I'm not sure what this inconsistent begin and end types error is for. Because like our begin and end types are different. Like our, our begin type is our iterator and our end type is default sentinel, but that should be supported. Okay. Slap a, a range is common range on it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, for those who don't know, common range means that your begin and that your iterator and your sentinel type are the same, uh, like all of the containers in the standard library. Um, King error on line 28. Oh, did I not update this? Oh, it's because I use it in a couple of places. That's fine. Maybe that was the cause of the first error. No. Hmm. Okay. Inconsistent begin and end types in range base four statement. Um. Have I not written the. Is this giving me issues because of this is a non const iterator or something? Um. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, coming from the, the cons qualification. All right, so let's think about this properly. So do I want to support mutation of these values inside the group? So are subranges mutable? Um, 
what is the type of operator star? Oops. Um, it's not telling me. Just wondering, like, if you can mutate your your sub range in general. Uh, okay, well, there's a mutate in there, so. I guess the answer is yes. <laughs> so that would allow us to do something like, you know, d dot name equals, um, blah, blah, blah. um, but then we also want to support const properly. So, okay, that probably means that we're gonna have to do the whole song and dance where we template our iterator on whether it's a const iterator or not, then that requires us to do a bunch of other stuff like um, have a constify thing, conditional, so if we are const then we want const t, otherwise we just want t. Okay, and then this needs to be const of 5v. This needs to be const of 5v, and this needs to be const of i chunk by view. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we need a conversion iterator which I'm going to steal from here. It's the one. An iterator which allows you to convert a non-const iterator into a const iterator. Um, convertible to v const v move current, let's, we also need to move end of range, end of current range, and we also need to copy over the parent. Okay. No. Is this all correct? If we are doing this, so is so that's now going to be a const iterator because we're doing iterator t of const of iv. So doing a sub range of two const iterators should be fine. Um, that's all good, that's all good. Okay, so then we have our normal begin, which returns iterator of um, false. And then we have a const begin, which returns iterator of true. And now we also want to handle, so if, if something is a simple type, which I have defined here. Sorry, a simple view. That's when the iterator type is the same as the const iterator type. We also want to properly handle that, um, which means we need to, in here, require that uh, v is not simple view. And here we require that um, const v is a range. Requires with us. Okay. I think that's good. Let's give that a try.
And have a quick look at our other ones as well to make sure there's nothing I'm missing. So for enumerate, oh, we have to include common up here. So our enumerate iterator, what things did that have? Had integrated category, value type. We did not define a distance type. That's constructor, constructor, base, operator star, operator plus plus. We're not using that because we're not bidirectional. We're not random access. We don't have any of this stuff. We've got our quality operator. Oh, we do want our non-const iterator to be a friend. Which we can put uh, here. Okay, we've got an invalid conversion from const chunk by view lambda star to chunk by view star in here. Um, where is this? Line 73. So the auto keyword in C++ is essentially the same as um, doing template deduction. It basically uses whatever you initialize it with and deduces the type of that. Shouldn't the views shouldn't the views be shallow const so only have a const begin and end? Um, you mean here? I think we should have a like this should return a non-const iterator and this should return a const iterator. Uh, still getting this error on here. Did I get these things the wrong way around with simple view? No. Mm. Thanks to the Paul, follow Paul S. Um, should be const expert at least. Yeah, views can can be mutable. Oh, it's in my constructor. Constify v and constify chunk by view. Hopefully that works better. Um, that's my different one. It looked like this compiled, didn't it? I'm gonna try an MSVC switch between compilers because one's giving me not very good error messages, one I'm getting internal compiler errors from. Always fun playing around with um, newish features. Okay, that succeeded. Cool. Let's see if it passes. Well, I didn't have any requires, but let's see if it does what I expected it to do where where is the test should have been added to the cmake list by the glob just gonna gonna regenerate the cmake cache See if it picks up properly.
But anyway, so we're hoping... Well, now we're just going to see a la-la for all of them because I wanted to check that it was mutable. Um, let's remove that. So we're hoping to see group start Fido Bob, group start Catherine, group start Max Sai. That would be cool. I feel like we got like most of the, the actual machinery implemented in like 30 minutes and then just spent 30 minutes doing the <laughs> the little bits and pieces which always go wrong. Okay, semic generation. There we go. Let's see what this does. If we get what we expect, I can turn it into a proper test. I just want to see some nice output. <laughs> building, building, building. Okay, okay. Okay, that's not correct. <laughs> That's, that's definitely not correct. Um, okay. All right, so something's obviously going wrong. Um, let's just stick down a bunch of breakpoints and see what's up. Yeah, so the, the next VS preview is C++ 20 complete, um, which is 16.10 preview three. Um, I do have a uh, like internal build of that installed, but I try to not use internal builds on stream. So it's just that there was something wrong with some of the logic in our implementation. Okay. So when we do our adjacent find, I'm expecting this to change to Catherine or whatever it was we called it. It is not. It's changed to Fido. That would explain things. Um, so still adjacent find from current up until, uh, oh, we need to negate this. Uh, not fun. Stood not fun is something which takes a predicate and then returns the complement of that predicate. So currently we're checking, we want to find the first element which does not return true. Uh, whereas we're getting the, the opposite right now. Yeah, definitely brush up on Visual Studio usage. That means that I can justify doing this as, as work more easily. <laughs> there are some things which make streaming like this a lot easier, especially when I'm switching between compilers, like moving between GCC and MSVC just by flipping this and then targeting Linux by choosing a different configuration. That's nice. It's It makes things a lot easier. Too many brackets. Too many brackets. Should really, oh, parent, something not found. Did I just, yeah, I don't have an underscore. Did I do it in the other one as well? Uh, To really fix this warning as well. Yeah, so it's targeting WSL. So like I've got um, Ubuntu installed in WSL. 
and this has everything set up already. Um, like GCC 10 and all my build tools and CMake and things like that. So I just create uh, a new configuration and I don't have to do any conf any like screwing around with SSH or anything like that. It just targets um, WSL automatically. It's very cool. That succeeded. Let's try this again. See if we get what I expected. Okay, so now I'm hoping that I get not Fido in there. Bob, that's also not what I wanted, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so what, what's happening here is I've just gone off by one error, right? This is returning the first element for which the um, calling this binary correct predicate fails. I want to return the second one. So this line is getting janky. I should really refactor this a bit. But for now, uh, I think calling std next on this is the correct behavior. It does mean that I'm trying to think what happens if you give me an empty range. Um, if you give it an empty range or a range of size one, this might break. This might also break on the final iteration. We'll see. Yeah, you can target SSH too. Um, you go into manage configurations. This is using CMake. You can just create a new configuration. Hit like, I want to target Linux GCC. Oh, std next can take a, std ranges next at least can take a, um, a bound. So yeah, we could pass std end as a bound so that it never goes past that. That's a good idea. We'll definitely want to split up onto different lines then, but uh, yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted. And then when we call operator plus plus, then uh, it's Catherine and then Max, is that correct? Uh, where's my file gone? Uh, I think that's correct anyway. And then finally, okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. Uh, another off by one. But yes, yeah, did next, we can bound it. So um, let's call this um, first failed. And then we want the next of first failed bounded by std end of parent base. Um, and then we want to do the same here. Let's factor this out into a function which we call um, find end of current range. Just stick that in here. Range just does that, so I don't have to update it in two places if, if we need to make more changes. And here, and end of current range. Cool. Okay, let's see if that fixed it. Whoops. No matching token bound. Uh, closing paren of the bound instead next. Yes, thank you. Oh, 
cannot convert Mm -hmm. Can't convert argument to from vector iterator to up oh, std ranges next. Difference here. So std next can either take, can just take an iterator and then a difference type, whereas std ranges next can also take a bound. So that's why that didn't compile. Okay. So hopefully by the end of this line, current is Fido, end of current range is something. Okay, this is just going around in circles. Uh, so we're obviously not comparing correctly against. Let's do this again. I'm going to close a bunch of these files. <laughs> Uh, close all about this. Just my test and my my file. Okay. Let's try to debug this again. So this is when I'm constructing. So first failed should be um, Bob. First failed is Bob, and then the end of current range should be, um, oh wait, I just want this. Std range is next, with the bound is gonna increment all the way to the end. I just want to increment one place unless we're currently at stud end. Could also just have a if statement, I guess. But, um, okay, and a current range is Catherine. Good, good, good. Okay, and then this is when we increment it. So now we want Catherine to be the start of our range. Oh, did current not get incremented? Oh, did we remove that from right here? We need to first set current to end of current range. And then we find the new end. Okay. So we know that the first one's correct. All right, so now Catherine is current. That's correct. End of current range should now be max, which is cool. Then next time we come round, um, current is max, and end of current range should be our end iterator, which this looks about right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we shouldn't have got here. <laughs> um, or should we have? Is this fine? Yes. 
now we're we're fine and now we should end Fido, Bob, Max Tag. It worked! Yay! Okay, cool. Um, let's make this into proper test. So we can... What's the best way to do this? Mm. So you could sort first. Uh, you could, uh, you know, there's some times where you would just want to group by the consecutive ones in the first place. Uh, if you do want to, like, create groups from everything, then you would need to sort first. Um, of course, you could envisage an algorithm which builds up the groups in a single pass, but that would have to allocate. So... Um, that's why there's not a view for it. Um, generally don't want to al be allocating stuff in views. Um, and of course, you know, you would need to essentially run through the entire list, uh, the entire range in order to build up the, the groups, even the first group, you know, you need to go all the way to the end to check if anything is in the first group. So, um, it wouldn't make sense for a view to do that. Uh, you could have a like an action or an algorithm which does consume the entire view, and then and produces you know like a a map or or something like that. So yeah, there's a few um, a few options. Um, all right, what's the best way to test this? I guess we can say we can keep track of our um our group and say um loop over the groups um it's going to require that d is equal to dogs um, I guess we can keep track of that as well um, we also want to make sure that we've got the right groupings um, mm -hmm, mm. Group ID plus plus. I guess since we've got not a whole lot of things, we can just do it manually. Like if I, we have a switch statement, switch on I. Um, if I is zero, then require that D dot name equals Fido. Um, and um, group ID equals zero. And then in this case, Bob, Catherine, Max, and Sai, and our group IDs are zero, one, and two. Breaks everywhere. Let's try that. Okay, so that's looking like it's working. Um, oop, chain comparisons are not supported inside assertions. Oh, catch is does not like me doing this much inside a single requires. Uh, that's okay. I can, I can break these out. Should I fail test on default? 
Um, yeah, I could fail test on default. Uh, require that group ID is zero. Uh, this one should still be zero. This one should be, whoops. This one should be one and then two and two. What was the catch two way of failing test? It's require false legit. So this is all pretty much working. Um, still got like 40 minutes left, so I can either try and implement, um, oh, I guess we can do the, the piping, right? We haven't implemented piping yet. But after that, I can either try and implement input iterators for this, or I can move on to, um, to a different algorithm like group by key or chunk by key, I think I said I would call it. Uh, remove the, my laptop monitor is kind of in the way of the breakpoint bar. <laughs> that succeeded, very nice. Okay. Um, so in addition to that, we want name space views and namespace detail. So here we're going to have our, um, our chunk by function object, which I'll call chunk by fun. Okay. So when you, um, create, so th this use case is for, um, essentially duplicate this and call this one um, group by pipe. Instead of this syntax doing dogs piped into TL views chunk by. Okay. So in order to support this, can I copy paste something from here? Yeah, I basically want a call operator which returns something which captures the function. Um, Constate expert auto um, operator call. And it takes some function f, which is some binary predicate, but we don't know the types yet. So I don't think we can constrain this properly. Um, yeah, I don't think we can say that this is a binary predicate yet. Um, okay, so we take some F and we're gonna return um, some type which captures it, which we can Maybe just make in here. I guess we're gonna need a name for it. Um, so we can just call it, put it here. Struct chunk by closure. Return chunk by closure. Also move F. And then chunk by closure is gonna take some F it's gonna be a template, and then it's gonna have a const expert, is it friend const expert auto operator pipe. Okay, so that's gonna take on the left hand side some range, some forward range. Um, R. And on the right hand side, it's going to take a chunk by closure. And 
we are going to return a chunk by view of std forward r and std move f. So I'll correct. And then in here, we have a const expert inline detail chunk by function called chunk by. Thanks to the follow RFC. So the idea is that we have some inline const expert variable called chunk by. When you call that with some function, it's going to create an object called chunk by closure. Then that specifies a pipe operator, which takes some forward range and um, itself, and then returns uh, a chunk by view, which deduces all t for the range and just passes through the function. So fingers crossed that supports our piping use case in here. Uh, lose some const volatile qualifiers in order to call operator. Um, whoops. <laughs> Oh, because this is const expert. This can just be const. And this should not be const because I want to move out. In fact, this should be an R value because I want to move uh, c.f. Okay, can't convert from lambda to int. Um, I, mean, I guess I can pass this here. If that's what was wrong. That is, okay. So now both of those should pass. Yay! We implemented piping. That's kind of cool. So now we can pipe something to fuse chunk by, give it a binary predicate, and um, it all works. So what do you think now? Should I try and implement input ranges for chunk by, or should I go for chunk by? key, it, chunk by key. Um, I think chunk by key will actually be easier because it's essentially the same thing to the extent that you could probably implement them with a um, base class maybe, but I think we could essentially duplicate this. Chunk by input range. So chunk by key, the idea is um, it thinks the follow Megaditya. Um, chunk by key, instead of taking a binary predicate, which tells you when the groups end, it will take a uh, projection, a unary invocable, which tells you what group it belongs to. So uh, I feel like those two are reason close enough together that they should be in the same header. Maybe I'm wrong, but we could put them in the same header. So the, the idea is instead of giving it a um, left and right here, we would just simply return d.age. Like Ruby's partition by, probably. I haven't, I can't remember what that does off the top of my head, but the um, the main thing here, again, is that this is um, consecutive members. Um, so this will return three groups, the first of that, then that, then that. It will not return two groups because that would require allocating and doing a whole bunch of other work. Um, so chunk by key, 
view. And otherwise it's going to be fairly similar. So one thing though, which I think chunk by key should do, uh, tail views chunk by key, is since we are computing the projection here, we should return that to the the user, right? Uh, we shouldn't require the user to keep this lambda around in order to get the the key, which means that when I so when you iterate over a group, you don't just get the um, the dog, you also get the key. So then instead of requiring our group ID here and keeping track of that, we can, because our key will be 12 here. And similarly, our key will be, oh, well, in fact, yeah, it is still, these will still be in different groups. So we can require that, uh, group ID is one and require that the key is 12. And that will be the case in all of these except for Catherine, in which case it's nine. Okay. I'm just gonna kill, remove this test case for now. Get this one working first. Can I explain why I'm using auto ref ref? Auto ref ref basically means this can be an L value or an R value, and it can be const or non const. Like if I stick auto ref in there, then that means that this has to be non const. So auto ref ref, it can mean forwarding reference, it can also mean I don't care, give me anything. Um, sort of enumerated. Um, not quite, like enumerated gives you back the index and, well, I mean, it's it's similar in the, in that you would use structure binding most of the time to, to take care of this. Yeah. Um, oh, in fact, it's not gonna be there, is it? When you get the group, you're gonna get the group's key. Like here. Uh, yeah, auto ref ref forwards the, the value category and the const volatile um, qualifiers. Auto ref does not. Okay, so in chunk by, should we put these in the same header? Maybe not, maybe we should have a new one. Chunk by key. But it is going to be a very similar implementation, so I'm just going to copy paste it for now. Uh, Oops, chunk by key. C++ can be complicated. I mean, this is complicated because I'm doing like um, the kind of stuff which would be implemented in your standard library. Right? Most people should not have to write this code. Uh, this is not normal application code. This is something you would leave to people who have written lots of code like this or are interested in doing that. Um, you know, when you need like really generic um, ranges and, and libraries for, for your implementation. Uh, most people should not be writing this code. But I do think it's interesting, which is why I'm doing it. Anyway, um, chunk by, we're gonna rename to chunk by key everywhere. Okay, so now our differences. What are our differences? So we did not constrain F here because we can't. Um, technically could constrain this operator, but I think it's fine just constraining in here. So previously we had the F was a predicate of two range references. 
That is no longer the case. This is now a std invocable of a single range reference, which means it's something we can call with an instance of um, dereferencing an iterator from this view, from this range. Um, other than that, so our value type is going to be a std pair now, because we also want to return our key. And our key type is going to be the result of invoking oops, of invoking f on um, std ranges range reference t of constify v. See what I mean? Like <laughs> most people should not have to write this code. It's it's kind of horrible. Um, I think that's correct. This means that we need um, to hash include pair. I think pair is the right thing to return here. Um, a pair of the key type and the subrange. Key type and a subrange of the iterator type. Yes. Okay. Um, so that means when we dereference, then we need to construct our pair, uh, which means we need to keep around the current key. think because so we're going to compute the key when we construct or when we increment our operator so we need to keep track of that so we'll have a key type which we'll call current key and then when we find the end of the current range then we're going to first um, compute the current key for current, which is std invoke of uh, dereference current. With F. Sorry, base underscore, no, parent underscore F. Taking the function from our parent and then calling it with um, dereferencing current. And that will give us the current key. Then we're going to find, we don't want to do adjacent find anymore. We want to do std find if. Um, we want to find the first type for which, sorry, the first value um, for which std invoke of our function and that value is not equal to the current key. Yeah, I think that's right. What are point-and-click games? Point-and-click games like the old LucasArts adventure games like Monkey Island and all that good stuff. Okay, so that will find the first failed. Everything else is still the same. Uh, looks good to me. And when we dereference, then we return a std pair of current key 
and our sub range. When we increment, we do that whole thing again. This stays the same, that stays the same. This all stays the same. I think that's worth trying. Anyone see any problems with it? By the way, the reason we're using std invoke instead of simply calling the function like this is that uh, this could be a pointer to a member function and that syntax doesn't work. It std invoke basically calls the function and it doesn't matter if this is a function or a pointer to a function or a lambda or a pointer to a member or a pointer to a member function, it will all work. Um, I'm going to rip that test out of chunk by create chunk by key. Uh, is it this one? Chunk by key. I right, call this dot cppp. probably require all of the same includes apart from the last one. Chunk by key. Okay. So chunk by key view. Oh, that's just because we hadn't included the header yet. All right, let's build. See what happens. Like I said, these two views are pretty similar, so I'm hoping that getting this one working is a lot easier. So while this is building, I'm going to talk a bit about the iterator types. So I require here for the underlying range to be a forward range, which means that you can um, move forward, um, but you can also save any iterator at any stage and then move forward from that one. Um, a good example of that is uh, a singly linked list, like std forward list. Like at any point in that, you can take some node and you can always walk forward from that node. You can't walk back, uh, you can't jump ahead, but you can walk forward from any node. Uh, input range, you cannot save a node. It's like if you were reading from, from std in, like you can't save an iterator into std in. That doesn't make sense. So I currently require this to be a forward range. Let me just fix. Um, so I currently require this to be a forward range. I think it's possible to implement this for input ranges, but it requires a lot more work because um, in here, find end of current range. What I do is I walk through from current up until I find something which doesn't match. And then I return that sub range. You could not do that would not work for input ranges because you would be reading something and you would read a bunch more to find out where the mismatch was, but then you couldn't go back. Like you'd already consumed that stuff from, from the input. So for input range, you would have to implement, you couldn't return a std sub range. You would have to implement an outer iterator and an inner iterator for the sub range, which both communicate with each other. Um, so that like, if you increment the outer iterator, then the inner one increments as well. It would be a whole mess. I think it's possible, but it would take a lot of work. Uh, what's going on here? Syntax error, missing a uh, angle bracket. This is a forward iterator as well. Key view, yeah, I think so. Um, um, oh, no, what am I missing here? Jump back, key view, dogs. Return d.h. This looks fine to me. 
Mm. Anyone seeing what's wrong here? Missing semicolon. So then some the lambda. That closes there. That looks fine. Try GCC. See if I can get this working in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, and I think you could do this, the same thing for um, for chunk by key view. You could support input iterators. It would just be a lot of, of extra work. Could use coroutines to do input iterators. I mean, it would help a little bit, but I don't think it would help a whole lot. This was not captured in the Lambda function. Correct. Dog was not specified. Did you mean log? <laughs> when is C++ programs drink water? Compile time. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, this code is all on GitHub. Tartan Lama slash ranges. So currently we've got enumerate, cycle, Cartesian product, and two. All of these have been implemented on stream the last couple of weeks, or three or four weeks. Oh, I forgot to copy over the the dog struct. Just stick this here. Yeah, so we've got quite a, a decent amount implemented. Um, pretty much all of this has been on stream. Some things I've gone back and fixed. Um, if it was like um, Cartesian product operator plus equals for Cartesian product, um, which is this monstrosity of doing a whole bunch of maths to work out how many times you have to cycle the iterators and things like that. I couldn't do that on stream. My my brain would not function. So I, I implemented that off. Lama's printed Yama in, in Spanish. Has no member called F. Um, oh, it's called Funk. And here. Okay, void value not ignored as it ought to be in predefined ops. Okay. <laughs> um, what's that coming from? Did invoke call. Oh, am I not returning in my test? I am. Um. Oh, I'm not returning inside that lambda. Silly me. Let's try that. Okay, that looked better. Still have that internal compiler error in the other, um, in Cartesian product, which I need to work out. It's something to do with um, one of my concepts. 
Uh, which one was it? Uh, maybe it wasn't Cartesian product. Oh, it was Stranges 2. That's where the, the ice was. In this. This ice is GCC 10. I don't know why. The error with concepts before was in the Matroshkable concept. That worked out fine. Uh, I can't remember what was the problem there, but I did manage to fix that. Okay, let's run this test. That seemed to build. Uh, again, that's not populated in there. I'm going to regenerate the cache. Um, and we should have piping syntax as well. So if I go ahead and... So I don't have to copy the whole test case. Or actually, yeah, I'll do that. Um, to group by key pipe. So as well as this syntax, we should be able to take dogs and pipe that into TL views chunk by key and give it our projection and that should work. Okay, I'm going to do a bunch of CMIC stuff, if I spell correctly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so then, of course, the next one would be TLViews chunk, which instead of taking a function, you'd say, like, um, chunk into sub ranges of size 10 or something which should also be fairly similar to these ones okay chunk by key let's give this a run i think this is quite nice like you, you say you chunk by the key and then you get back the key and the group, and then you can iterate it over iterate over the everything inside the group. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the the usage here. Okay, come on, come on, failed. Interesting. On line twenty eight. The group ID was not updated. Okay. That seems like a an actual bug. Um Okay. Let's debug this. There'll definitely be a bug in well, most likely be a bug in here. Okay, so we get our current key, which should be 12. Yes. We then find the first failed. Oh, we shouldn't be taking the next here anymore because we're, um, we were taking the next because we were getting the, it was a binary predicate and it was always returning the first one, which failed instead of the second one. Now we're only, operating on a single element at a time, so we don't need to do this line. Um, but let's make sure this works anyway. Uh, first failed should be Catherine. Yeah, okay. So instead of doing this thing, we just straight up do and of current range equals that. Don't have to, to do that. Rebuild. I think that should work. But I have been proven wrong a lot. <laughs> Uh, 
thinking. There we go. Okay, so our first round, time round, current key should be 12, end of current range should be Catherine. Current key is 12, end of current range, Catherine. Next time round, current key should be 9. Current key is 9, and the end should be max. Oh, whoops, I pressed the wrong button. But anyway, this, this is looking good. Um, what's it up to? Oh, it's loading symbols. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop debugging it, take off this breakpoint, check if our tests pass, because that was looking better. Just loading lots of symbols from symbol servers somewhere. Oh, and I don't even want the symbols, I just want to run my tests. Then why is it taking so long to load all of these when it didn't before? Uh, I don't know if I pressed something which I did not mean to press. I could rebuild the in release mode. Hopefully this will just take not too much longer. Oh. Okay, so that's why it was loading all the symbols, because I threw an exception. Inside std vector. Which is not what you want. Is that because my test is wrong? Hmm. That might be another bug. Okay, where did that come from? Um, okay, have I gotten off by one error? Um, so at the end, when I increment the iterator. No, I feel like there might be a bug in here. Okay, let's let's debug this again properly. Okay, so this is obviously an issue like of, of finishing off the the iteration. Okay, so here current key so current is max, which is here. So now we expect end of current range to be the, the one past the end iterator, so it would be garbage. Um, okay, right, so that's the problem. So when I get this group right, and the one, the, the end of current iterator is, um, is pointing here. I then assign that to current and then I try and call, I try and dereference it to, to get my current key, which is garbage. So basically I can, I can maybe just have a test in here, make sure that um, current is not equal to std ranges end of parent base underscore. So if current has just been set to the end, I don't try and work out what the current key is and where the end of the, the next range is. Okay, let's try that. Just continue, and 
Is that infinite loop? Sure, not doing much. He thinks the follow say wrapped. Okay, so current is max. So current key should be 12. End of current range should be garbage. Yes. Then on our next iteration, this sh should, yeah, just return. Okay. And then at some point we should be calling operator equals equals on um, default sentinel over here, and that should be returning true. Returned true. So now it should, okay, yeah, that worked. Oh, my, no, what's going on here? Something very strange is happening. Am I getting some conversion in my iterator here? I think it's explicit. But it shouldn't make a difference. Um We're so close. I want to get this finished up in the next like five minutes or so. It's like we should be getting to here essentially, where current is the past the end iterator, essentially garbage. And then it should be checking if we're at the end, which is if LHS, let's step in here and see what it calls. Turning base. Okay, this is the implementation of std range's end. And then this is vector const iterator. We should be checking that right and this are the same, which they are. You can see those pointers are the same. All good. Okay, so that returns true. So the iterator is at the end. And then gets dereferenced. It's already destructed, that's fine. And then we exit into catch. So then this is presumably the the pipe version. which should do very much the same thing. In fact, exactly the same thing. Yeah, and that should return true. Yep. Yeah. And then we should exit into catch.
Okay, there we go. I have no idea what happened there, but our code is fine. Just so something weird happened with catch. Okay, All right. Well, we got it working. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with these. Um, maybe some edge cases still work out. I haven't s supported input iterators. I need to think more about how you would do that. It would be a lot of a lot of work. But uh, that's chunk by and chunk by key. Um, let me know what you want me to try doing next week, whether it's like chunk itself or something completely different. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Uh, thanks everyone for joining in and uh, I'll see you all next week.